Hello, Digital Card Fighters. This is Kyle D, better known as Ride My Avatar, bringing you some well needed deck profiles. Today's deck profile is none other than the amazing Pale Moon that got released. We have Lukia Reverse. This deck can be nuttedly crazy and it just does so much. And it can just push your opponent with no problem at all. A deck that pretty much when you're at five gets you. Not one attack, not two attacks, not the basic three either. Up to five to maybe six attacks swinging at the opponent all in one go. Just because if it hits, it calls out again. You have now lines. You can knock out maybe three to five PGs worth in no time flat. So guys, let us dive right in with a deck that can multi-attack like there's no tomorrow. Remember guys, if you want, catch me on my live streams, the podcast, subscribe to this channel, everything like that to stay up to date. Follow me on my social medias. They're all down below. Clicking those links down below will let you know what I'm planning. Usually I do a little bit of Digimon, Cardfight Vanguard, and everything else in between. So let's dive right into the game. So first off, let's go over our newest deck. So... As you know, Lukia Reverse kind of brings more th Silver Thorns to the field that just makes this deck incredible. So first off, we do have Silver Thorn Assistant L Linola. So this card is pretty much the bread and butter of this deck for being one of the best Forerunner starters we ever had. So when this unit boosts a Silver Thorn Vanguard the, and the attack hits, look at two cards from the top of your deck. Put a Silver Thorn into your soul. So really good because you filter out so much pretty much taking cards out putting silver thorns in um makes it so that you are likely not to leave nothing that isn't a trigger you want in there there are a lot of good viable targets you want to put in with this effect first off being grade twos you might need and second off you do want to get silver thorn dragon tamer lukier in by this effect because being able to grab her put her into soul means that the moment you do ride reverse Lukier, she's already break ride numbers. So definitely take that into account. So out of all the Silverthorn targets, we only have eight targets that are not viable targets to be put into soul by this effect. So we also ha do have a grade one assistant, I um, Irina. So she does the same thing, but when placed though, doesn't matter how she's placed, it's when she's placed, she activates. So again, filtering, very good skill, very powerful skill. Next, we have Silverthorn Beast Tamer Ayana. So when the attack this unit boosted hits, counterblast to call a Silverthorn from your soul at the end of the battle, put that unit into soul. So this helps out with the Link Joker matchup because again, we can call cards out and then just shove them back in and not have to worry about that issue. So guys, definitely take that into account. We also play Silverthorn Breathing Dragon because again, having a 10k that comes out mid combat just to take care of or maybe get an extra hit in just might help you in the long run. Um, we do play Hades Hypnotist, and the major reason why we play Hades Hypnotist is because the fact is we don't, if we play the Silver Thorn one, we are obligated to put our PG into Soul. So again, making it so that Hyp Hypnotist is our PG, even though we want to be on Limit Break. We don't mind because putting it into soul is the worst outcome. We want to have it in the deck so we can have a chance to draw it. So definitely want to take that into an effect. Then we have Silverthorn Rising Dragon. This is basically a guaranteed 12k attacker at all times. We play it at 4 because being able to pull it out of soul can make 19k columns. Anything like that when you're just trying to set up for these multi-attack turns because this card alone even if you don't break ride i mean ride to grade three this card alone can put in pressure by itself that even being unstuck on grade two as long as you're on this as vanguard you're ahead of the game by a mile so silverthorn beast tamer moronica is when this unit attack hits counterblast to call silverthorn from your soul at the end of the battle put this unit into soul so just sitting her on vanguard is just really good we also play silverthorn 10ks because again it's just very powerful next we also do play silverthorn upright line so when your other silverthorn rear guard is placed from your soul this unit gets plus 3000 until the end of the turn 
So this keeps stacking. So if you keep calling with Moronica or Ayana, you can just keep getting it boosted and powered up. And it just does crazy numbers. Next, we do have Miracle Pop Eva. Yes. Oh, sorry. I'm rephrasing that. We have 12 targets that aren't viable to be um, put into soul. So let's rephrase that. I'm going to say I'm an idiot. So Miracle Pop Eve, Eva is when Rotopon your Vanguard gets plus 1,000 for the and the following ability until you end turn. When this unit attacks, put two rear guards into soul to call two cards from your soul. Sadly, this effect will not activate if you do not have two rear guards. So if you only have one, sad day, boys. You ain't soul charging anything. But when this unit attacks a Vanguard, soul charge one to gain 1,000. So it becomes a 12k attacker, which isn't bad. It hits MLB. But again, not cross ride numbers. Here's the new bread and butter Silver Thorn Dragon Queen Lukia Reverse. So, Counterblast lock a rear guard to call a card from your soul that unit gets plus 5,000 until the end of turn. When your rear guard is placed from your soul, this unit gets plus 5,000 until the end of turn. So, similar to Lukia, but better because it is 5,000. So, she gains bigger numbers quickly because, again, instead of 3,000 per pull, it is an extra 2,000k. And that just stacks pretty quickly. Then we do play one Silver Thorn Tamer Lukier because, again, she is still a great backup ride. But again, for the cross ride number is really all we use her for. So when this when your rear guard is plus three thousand, or you can use the Counter Blast two to call a grade a gr one grade zero through three for each from your soul. So you can build a board with her, not no problem. And then we play Nightmare Daryl Alice because, again with reverse lukier she kind of can be put in and out of soul for pretty much guarantee hits so again and she also hits the early game when you go first because you will hit grade three first then you play her on rear hit gets into soul grabs a grade two now you make new combo line numbers that just immensely powerful so without further ado let's dive into the fight i know i rambled on a bit but guys if you really want to come hang out with me Join my Discord. We can chat up everything about Vanguard, Digimon, um, Yu-Gi-Oh, anything. We're a kind of just mixed card game group. And we also have new new stuff coming in, like Pokemon, everything like that. Hopefully, this is not a bad matchup. So, let's see. We could just do a cross-ride session, but I'm going to put two back. Okay, it's a VB Farmer. We're just going to skip this fight real quick. I'm going to give up. Congratulations, you won. <laughs> I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. So let's try this again, shall we? Let's retry. So, again, we also have many other deck profiles. So if you guys check up above, get another shot at looking at those. So definitely follow the links. I think you're right above my head or somewhere around here or here, whatever. Oh my goodness. No, what is with all the VP farmers tonight? Dang, I wish I was VP farming apparently. We're just going to give up real quick if I don't see a card go back. We're going to put you back. Yup. Congratulations, you won. <laughs> wow, let's, let's just stop there <laughs> wow three times in a row we lost boys green at quality entertainment we gotta love that i got my butt kicked by vp farmers because i just rage quit <laughs> i'm gonna make you guys sit through and suffer through that like you guys want to see a deck that plays so i'm gonna give you a deck that plays so let's hope for the best here let us go A real match this time. Show us the battle for ages. Okay. So we are going to place against Kagero. Good luck. High five. Going second against Kagero. So this could really make or break in certain, certain, certain situations. But our hand's actually pretty good. We have a PG. We have a really good ride target. So we're not going to put anything back. So let's see what he does here. He will not be giving us damage, which is fine. We'll give him one. He'll give us two. We'll go from there. 
So he rides Nambala, and that's not bad. So he's going to swing into us. We can live with that, right? We can live with that. Hmm. Okay, so we put back Novella to get his the end. So we have a PG to hold him off if he goes too crazy. Hmm. So first off, let's ride the goodest of girls so that we kind of do a double whammy. So with us getting the heal and the PG here. Okay, cool. Grade one goes in. And we'll save this for afterwards. So let's swing 12k. Ooh, that PG would have been nice to hand because we're going to need... Ooh, taking out a PG is... Oh, you hate to see that. But I'm kind of happy that that shuffled because if I hit a draw trigger getting a heal into my hand, I would have said, you know what, this sucks. But because that shuffle did help, that means now the deck is fixed a little bit better. So two PGs out of deck. We know one's there. So, ooh, no great twos. Oh no! Watch the heal back on top. I mean the PG. Ooh, we could do a lot here, boys and girls. By a lot, I mean probably hot nothing. But we can definitely take out a rear guard or two. So let's see. The proper line of attack is 12k. Hope no defensive swing here Twelve k cool no defensive trigger that puts us up we're gonna need a trigger dang it i did not do math <laughs> uh that's gonna cost us a little bit because i made an error should have swung at the rear guard and then called the 10k there the proper line of attack would have been that so i misplayed there and i will say that will that cost us the game possibly depends on how our opponent plays here okay that is a second end out of the way cool that heal is just a little too late bud Okay, so we're going to ride Lukier. So no matter what happens here, we will be hitting him to 12. So yes. We're going to put the grade 3 into soul because we can pull her out afterwards. We'll grab the grade 2 to put a blocker in. Yeah, why not? Let's let's put some extra pressure in. Cool. Grade 2 into soul. And then we'll swing in for 26. Nice. We hit a draw trigger on top of that, giving us another grade two to work with the following turn and another draw trigger into a secondary PG, which is well-deserved. So 19. We'll put the grade two in. Then turn that down. So he's going to save his hand here because he needs the resources. So he'll ride the end here just to gain the power boost. One of two things can happen in this situation. Ooh. So, yep, he's going to swing with the end. Restand with the end skill here with Dragonic him or it's going to be the end himself so which one is it okay it's the persona blast one discard two draw a card 
Well, kind of boss to draw a card. So he's got a definitely a PG in hand. Nice that heal trigger just still gets us into range of getting smacked. But what's going to be nice is the following turn we could. Ew, he hit a heal trigger, which is not good in our favor. So we're going to have to do. Ooh, draw trigger. Perfect, actually. Discard three, draw two. He's got one PG in hand still, but that does not matter in the slightest. I'm hoping he doesn't hit any more triggers. We're fine. Cool. We didn't lose a PG either. So that puts us at a very good going. Uh, yeah, we're not. Activate skill first. Sadly, we have to lock you. Let's see. Who are we pulling out? definitely pulling out Alice so let's battle it out so Alice will nab us a grade two Which will be her. Now he gets a boost. This attack hits. There's now a draw trigger in play. We're going to nab the grade one in the back here retire to add resources and to pull Lukier up to where she needs to be. So now we're at 22, which we need a trigger to pass. So, which is completely fine by me. There we go. We hit a trigger, boys. So 22. So one PG gone. And here's 27. Two PG's gone. So resources in hand will not match up what he needs to do the following turn. We do have two PG's, so the end will not be hitting us. So which is good. Novella could come down, and we wouldn't really care. Because Novella isn't big enough for us to worry about. Okay, grade two. So two attacks directly. That's three attacks. Ew. We are not ready for three, sadly. Yep. Doesn't matter. We can't six damage heal. I was not expecting them to have both of those dragons. Well, that cost us the game. Because Novella shuts off everything. So we can't six damage heal out of this. Sadly, we might flip it and we're going to just lose. Okay. Well, guys, I've showed you the deck off. I'm sorry I couldn't pull out the win on this. Personally, I would have loved that. But we kind of didn't get just that final push turn. Again, he nabbed everything. We were sitting at six. If we healed the turn earlier, if the draw wasn't a, a draw and it was a heal, we would have been fine. Or if he didn't gain the ability of also having two novella, really to counterblast one retire guys, we would have been fine. But because of that happening, we did lose. We were outplayed. Again, a little more luck on his base. He had pretty much the exact answer he needed. Um, again, that's kind of like our major downfall is, again, any deck that can retire from nothing on value is ridiculous. But hey, that's how the cookie crumbles. So guys, remember to like, comment, and subscribe on this video if you liked it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace!